what name should we pray when we pray? It seems that uh, when Jesus was present, some people came and they accused him. They said, well, you're claiming to be the Son of God, but you can't claim that. And Jesus' response was, no, if two or more testify, then we have to look at the validity of it. And he said, I testify of myself, and also the Holy Spirit testifies to me. And Jesus meant that when he prayed, that by the Holy Spirit, by the power of God, people were healed. And he said, this is my testimony. This is my backup right here, the proof of it. So today we have people saying, well, there's only one name to which you should pray. And if you say, Lord, well, that's not, that's not the God of the Bible. That's not the God of Abraham. Lord could mean Satan. And that's very confused. Those two terms, Lord for Satan, Lord for God, meaning the supreme being, Kiros, Kyrios, Kuros, those are confused intentionally in the NIV, and that could be or very well be your problem. Don't read the NIV. Stay out of that mess. Just go back to the King James Version. It's only minusculely more difficult to translate thee, thou, thus, and whatever. Okay, now, let's look at how Jesus prayed. What name did Jesus use when he talked about the God of Abraham, who we today call Father, as adopted sons and daughters of God Almighty? So Matthew 6, 9, he says, after this, ma after this manner, therefore, pray you, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So here he's saying this is the address that you should use. They're asking Jesus, how should we pray? And Jesus gives us a very clear answer, our Father. We should call him Father. Recognize, some of you may be too humbled to think that you can do that. Absolutely, God's love is bigger than that. He wants you to call him Father. Okay, so we can call him our Father, which art in heaven, Father in heaven, Heavenly Father. These are all acceptable variations. It's not a big deal. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. I intentionally chose that one because most people's theology doesn't incorporate such a concept. But here, again, he says, my Father, which is in heaven. So how is Jesus calling him? Jehovah? Yah? Yahuwah? No. He's saying, my Father in heaven. We don't need to worry about any particular special pronunciation of the tetragrammaton, okay? We just got to say Father in heaven. That's it. In your local language. It doesn't matter. Greek, Spanish, Hebrew, Russian, Japanese, whatever it is, okay? We see that God testifies to our name. When we pray in Jesus, we see that people are healed. When we pray in the name of Jesus, we see that God fulfills to us right desires, right prayerful requests, just as he promised. People pray in Russian to Isusa. People pray in Spanish to Jesus. People pray in Arabic to Isa. But they all receive God's promises when they pray with the right heart for righteous things. Okay, let's look at just a few more here. Luke 10, 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. But, o Father, Lord of heaven and earth, he says. O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. So he calls him Father and he lists a title which belongs to God, Lord of heaven and earth. Okay, Matthew 15, 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. So again, he's referring to God, saying, My heavenly Father. Not Jehovah, not Yah, not any of these other things. Just my heavenly Father. That's it. Again, Luke eleven thirteen. If ye be, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? This is the man from Odessa reminding you, as always, to pray or be defeated.